Advanced Algebra 2 Summer Boot Camp is in session. Topic 4. Linear functions. Let's get serious now. I have some background information to share with you, so jot down a few things, why don't you? Let's start with table values. There, it's good. Table values, what do I mean by that? I mean a table, a two-column thing with information, data, numbers inside of it. And usually we deal with two columns, either vertically or horizontally. So table values, this is taking a numerical approach to algebra. The other approaches include a graphical approach, which is some sort of visual, either of an equation or of numbers, and a, um, an algebraic approach, an analytical approach, which is the same as a formulaic approach. So what's the equation that we're working with? So numerical, graphical, and analytical are the three best ways to say that. Now, how do we take uh, a ta table values and work with the calculator? So there are two ways. Uh, number one is using the table feature, which is second graph, but we usually do that to see data for an actual equation, like a linear function. But if we already have data, like we will have in our activity, then we're gonna use the list function, which we've used already in a previous video, stat edit, where we enter that and then we try to model um, algebraic concepts. Okay, oh, the other thing I should tell you is that the lists in the calculator, list one can be accessed by pressing second one and list two, second two. And you'll see me use that later. Let's talk about domain and range. So hopefully you've heard about this before, but the definition of domain is the set of input values. Usually we use the variable x for this, and it's a set, so it could be a few numbers or it could be a lot of numbers. It could be an infinite number of numbers. And the range is a set of output values. So those are values that are dependent on the x values. So x is independent and y is dependent. So y values for the range. Now on the calculator, as you can see to the right, the way that we can uh, you know, make sure that our linear function or some sort of model includes the domain and range uh, in the visual, we could press the window button and change the window. So this is our default window that we've used before as well or you could change the x values and the y values. So for example, let's say we had an x value in our domain that was say negative 15. So we would go to that x min and change it to maybe negative 20 so that we could see that value. But let's say that our y max was 147. Then we would change our y max to, well, maybe 150 or even 200 if we think we're gonna find some other values. But not always can we include all of the data in the domain and range in our window. So um, we could just adjust that as we go. One thing that we'll do in this upcoming activity is regression. And I defined regression for you so that there's no confusion. And um, so here it is, it's the process of estimating the value of the dependent variable from a given value of the independent variable. Now what that means is that we're doing some estimating and really the three-step process of regression includes two things that are not regression first. Step one is analyzing data. So we have our data from a table and we're just checking it out, seeing what, what it's all about. Step two is modeling the data so, you know, like putting out the correct clothes and, you know, walking down the runway. No, no. Making sure that that data is represented by a good model, a good equation, a good function. And then finally, the third step, which is the whole purpose of this, is to estimate or project values from that data. So it could be a variety of uh, situations, again, you know, interactions that we have in our everyday life. So um, that third step is really the regression step. It's being able to predict something in the future 
or something in, in the past uh, based on your data. Oh, and then as you see on the right, you can see all these different options. This is by pressing stat calc. So press the stat button, then arrow right to calc, and you'll see that soon as well. These are the, some of the options that are included. So the variety of ways that we can model data. So the one that we're gonna use is linreg, which is linear regression. Now the last two things are just, I just wanted to point them out, things that we do kind of a lot in algebra, and we could do them on the calculator. So the first one, let's say we have y equals 3x, and we're evaluating that function. So a function is just an equation that has a specific relationship between x and y. So y equals 3x. There's only one y for every x. Now if we plug in 4, we get 12. That's We've just evaluated a function. But there are a few ways that we could do this on the TI-84. So uh, just these few things, and you could jot them down so you could look back at them. One way is on the table, and we do that by pressing second table. And we can see what the values are of that equation. The second way is to, uh, to graph it and to press second trace. So this is all assuming you have y equals 3x or some function in your y equals. So you graph it, press second trace, and then you could uh, evaluate it. You press the value button, and you could enter a value. Pretty cool. And then you could see it on the graph. The third way, which is the function notation, and these are the three ways that I talked about earlier, numerical, graphical, and function, is on your main screen, and you press alpha trace, and you could, so it's a shortcut, alpha trace, uh, otherwise, you press the VARS button for the variables. Alpha trace allows you to pull that function, so Y1 or Y2, whatever, and then enter the number that you're evaluating in parentheses. So kind of like saying, what's 5 squared? You just do 5 squared. Uh, if your function is um, X squared, then you're just plugging in 5 into that. And I'll show you some of these as well. Uh, finally, solving an equation. And so let's say we have 3x equals 9. We could see pretty quickly that the answer to that is 3. We just divide by 3 and we have x equals 3. We solved it by hand. That's an algebraic step we can do. But if we have more complicated things that we want to do on the calculator, we can easily do that. So we take the left side of the equation, we enter it as y1. We take the right side of the equation and enter it as y2. And you could do this with two separate equations as well. And then you press second trace intersect. And we'll see what that uh, looks like in our activity as well. So that's all of the background information for now. And we're going to check out each of those things in the activity coming up. Fast food hamburgers. This little description says that calories are a unit of energy. You may burn around 70 calories just sitting at your desk and over 100 calories while you sleep. The energy required to lift a book from the floor to the table is only 0 0.003 calories. Okay, pretty interesting. So the table to the right shows the grams of fat and calories for 11 hamburgers from three different fast food places. How many fast food hamburgers do you eat in a week? Hmm, well mine is zero. But I do like myself a hamburger or a cheeseburger. Now, let's take a look at this data. So number one, what do you think is the relationship between the grams of fat and the calories in a hamburger? So first, let's just get familiar with this data. We see that the fat is increasing as we read the table going down, except for just one point. Notice that from 11 to 9, it goes down slightly, and then it goes back up. And then the calories, they all either stay the same or increase as you go down the table. Okay, interesting. Now the question says, is it a positive or negative association? And, you know, when we look at this data, as fat goes up, increases in value, so do the calories. So that's a positive association. There's a direct relationship between those two, and it's positive. So negative would mean that the fat goes up and the calories go down, or that's also called, I think that's called inverse. Okay, 
that's all we're doing in number one. So in number two, in order to graph and set up the viewing window, we first think about the independent variable. What's the domain? So let's talk about that and then we'll enter the data. So the fat, that's the domain. That's what the calories depend on. Uh, the amount of fat doesn't depend on how many calories there are, okay? So we would write the domain like this. We would include nine and include 79 and just write all of the numbers out. Kind of a lazy or shorthand way to do this would be to write nine comma 79. But that would mean that all of the values in between nine and 79 <clears throat> pardon me, are included, which is not necessarily the case. Part B, what's the dependent variable? Well, we know by now that that's calories. So the range for that, we would just write down all the values in a list as well. We could write 270 once, even though it's listed twice. Okay, number three, let's estimate how much the calories increase for every one gram of fat. Now, one way that we could do this is we could, we could calculate slope. We could just take two points, the first and the last, and calculate the slope between those two. And we end up with something around 12. Uh, otherwise, you could think about going from, let's say the second data point from nine to 19. So we're adding 10 and then to go from 270 <clears throat> to 360, we're adding 90. So, you know, that's maybe around nine per, uh, nine per gram of fat. Okay, because it's changing by 10 and then it's changing by 90 for the calories. Okay, now the next part is really setting up all the information really if we just say, uh, turn your stat plot on and go to stat edit. So we would go to here, let's press second Y equals and press enter and then press enter again. Oh, I'm gonna get a little crazy here. I'm gonna go with a plus sign and choose that, and I will choose a different color. So I'm gonna go with mm, green, I like the green. Okay, stat, edit, and let's just enter this data. So I'm gonna do this quickly, and you could pause if you need to. Sometimes when we enter the data by hand on the calculator, we type faster than it could actually handle it. Not on the computer though, but um, so you always want to look back at your data and make sure that it's correct. Because once you go through the re regression process, if you make one mistake, you get the wrong model. I'm sure that's been done many times. So I'm looking back at my data, 35, 38, 43, 49. And then I'll do the Y values next. So much fun. 400, 450. And sometimes you'll, sometimes the calculator might not pick up the zero because you're, you type that as fast as you think it. So I think 620 and I could type two zero really quickly or even with two fingers. So 660, 720, and 790, 1060. Okay, wonderful. So uh, the next thing that we want to do is visualize this. So we have our, all our data in. I checked it to make sure it's good. And our stat plot is on. So now I could press graph. And what? What in the world? Well, notice that when we have our data in here, these are large values. So that whole purpose of number two was that so that we could change our window. So if we're going from nine to 79, I like to do something like zero and then let's just say 100. And then for the Y values, we're going up to 1060. So I, I also like to include zero in this one. Oops, wrong one. And then I'll go up to 1200. Now I could see the data. And so you didn't have to pick the same exact amount or the same numbers that I did, 
but we'll still get the same thing. Okay, so we plot it as a scatter plot, and uh, we really don't care too much about the x scale or y scale, but notice that because the y's go up so much, they're not even tick marks. So if we wanted to, we could change that. So uh, let's let's see what that looks like. <clears throat> let's make the y scale 100, and we can see how that changes it. So you can see the tick marks. So that's kind of nice, but it really doesn't matter too much. So number four, how does your answer for question three relate to the graph? Now, if you think about getting a number like 10 or 12, that when you go from point to point, if you go to the right here and up, so for every one gram of fat, so if we go up 10, this should go up 100 or 120. And you can see how that kind of gets close to that, especially with the scale here. So uh, we're really thinking, I'm really thinking about the slope of the line, the line that kind of fits this data. Okay, so just a little bit to think about for that one. So we've, we've analyzed the data. We've thought about like how it goes up and how much it goes up. The second step that we'll do is model that data. And there are a few different ways we could do that. First, we'll start with the manual fit, which is the next thing. So to create your own line of best fit, press stat. And then we'll arrow to calc. And then we'll go, we're actually going to go up. It's the quicker way to get to manual. So the manual fit. It's funny on the page it says Manuel. So, uh, okay, so with that, we're choosing a manual fit. We're going to do it by hand, but it's still a line. So it fits in with our linear function stuff. Okay, so um, and we'll press enter on that. And let's store this equation. Let's press alpha trace and let's store it as y1. So see this little menu popped up? Press enter on y1. Enter again enter to calculate and it's important when you do some of these things to notice what your calculator is telling you to do it says drop points okay so now we'll use our arrows and we'll drop some points so i just kind of go down to this general area i sort of want to include both these points if i wanted to but you really can't so i'll go in between them i press enter to drop a point and this is all outlined on your page, but, or down below, you know, then you're creating a line. So I'm going to go all the way right and then up and it starts to model the data. You know, usually you want to have maybe half your lines on one side of the, half your points on one side of the line, half on the other, and then try to, you know, just touch as many as you can. So that's in the general range. It's, it's a general model. It's manual. Now you would get a different equation. If you got the same equation, that would be amazing. You know, we would we chose the exact same things. So this is the equation that that of that line which models the data. Now we press done. Oh uh, press done. We press I think graph for done or enter. No, graph. Yeah, because that's right below that button. Now, so it's done, now we go to y equals, and that equation is in y equals, because we told it to store it. So store R E G E Q or store equation is storing it here. So then we'll write down that equation, that's really the, the model. Now, number six says, how does your equation compare with the linear regression? Um, so, oh sorry, so number five, what's the equation of, your of the line? We include that there. The slope is 11.887 or whatever you got. And so that's the, the slope is telling how much the calories change based on the grams. OK, so we're done with the manual and then we could actually regress from there. We could say, well, what if the, the grams was something crazy like 120? What would be the calories like a triple cheeseburger? And we, we could regress. But now let's do the linear regression. So number six, how does your equation compare with the linear regression? So we'll view the data and two linear equations together. So stat again, and go over to calc. Now this time we'll choose option four. 
So it's kind of letting the calculator do it itself, you know, picking the best. And it's using statistical analysis, which you would learn in stats if you took it. And you press enter. Now, notice this is using list one and list two. We could change this. We could press second, three, and do list three and list four. So you could always, you could always have like two sets of data in your calculator if you want to. Now let's store the regression equation as y2. So arrow down to y2. Enter to go down to calculate, or arrow. Enter to calculate. Now we have a different equation. It gives you the model and it says what the slope is and it says what the y-intercept is or what, what the function is when x is zero. Now if we go to y equals, you'll see that equation in there too. Now remember the trick I told you before in a previous video, second left goes to the beginning. If you want to see the rest of this number, you could press second right and you could go to the very end. This is very precise, some of the the values there. Notice my lines are blue and red. Okay, my data is green. So I could press graph, see how close those lines are. So record your lines and then we could compare the two. We could look at the slopes of each line and we could see, wow, those are actually really close to each other. Or maybe you did a bad job with your manual and they're not that close. But it's likely that they're very close. Okay, so then the just to kind of wrap this up, we'll actually regress now. Uh, number seven, it says, what does the y-intercept mean in terms of the number of hamburgers? Okay, well, this y-intercept, that's like right there. It's a hundred and something. And um, so what does that mean? If the fat is zero, then the calories would be 140 something, you know? So I could hit trace here and I could go to second trace zero value zero and I could go and I could see it's 146 I'll show you that again in just a moment but 146 well maybe that means that that's what the tomato is in the bun or anything that doesn't have any fat in it you know because maybe this includes the entire burger number eight uh, this is where we'll use that value feature I just showed you. Now, how many calories are in a hamburger with 22 grams of fat? Interesting. Okay, notice that 22 is part of your domain, so we don't have to change the window. So now I'll show you. Let's press second, trace, value. Now we could enter any value we want. So we want to do 22, and this is one of the ways I showed you on our notes. Notice that at 22, the calories are 400 and approximately 8, 407.9. But this is for Y1. That's our manual fit. Now press up to get to Y2. You could also press down. Just go up and down to bounce between the different functions. If you had a third one, you could go up or down. And notice that that's 404. So 404 versus 407. So yours could be different. Okay, remember, that's one way to do that. Another way to do that is to go to your main screen, second mode, and this is like the function way. So press alpha trace, and we want to evaluate that at uh, y2, and this is function notation. So y2 of 22, what's the value of y2 when x is 22? 404.43. And then the, the third way, that I told you to press second table and you could see values in here. So you could see it for both functions. So that's kind of cool. So notice how the table kind of looks like lists. It is really a list, but it's it's doing something different for you. Okay. And if we want to know 22, we just, just have to keep going down to 22. But we could also change our table set. And we might talk about that later. Finally, number nine, if one of the fast food places created a triple burger, here it is, so I was talking about, with 1,243 calories, how many grams of fat would it have? Now, we wouldn't know for sure, right? We'd have to, you know, like if, depends on what they have in a burger, but bacon, mushrooms, etc. But this is saying, well, what is the value of X when Y is something, okay? So I'm going to turn off y1 so I don't get confused. So I arrow over the equals and press enter. And now I'm going to 
enter that value just like I did in the notes in here. So this was kind of like 3x equals 9 from our example, but instead y2 equals 1243. So we're looking for the x value. Now if you look at our data, 1243, we should get a number that's greater than 79, you know? So let's press graph so we could see that line. And notice 1243 doesn't show up. So we need to go to window and go up. Okay, if I lost you here, what we did was we graphed 1243. So we need to increase this to at least 1300 to have some room here. Okay, so this is y equals 1243. So what we could do, and there are, there's other ways to do this, but this is a really convenient way. We'll find this intersection point and find out what that x value is. And notice that x value is pretty large. So here's how to do that. Second, trace, which is calc. Intersect, which is five. Now we read the directions on the screen. Okay, it says first curve. What's your first curve? Well, it means what's your first equation, your line? Well, I'm on it. I'm on the red line or curve. So I press enter. Then it says, hey, what's your second curve that you're working with? Okay, I'm on it, 1243. It switched for me automatically. Then guess, guess where the intersection point is. Now we don't have to get too close with this. This is only when we have two curves that maybe have multiple intersection. So now we could just press enter and it calculates that intersection point. So super, super powerful tool used a lot in advanced algebra two pre-cal calculus. So there's a 1243 and the X value is 93. That corresponds to those calories. So notice that th that process, that's part of the regression process, plugging in the 22, but also finding out the 93 as well. Wow, that was a lot of information. And it was our longest video yet. Did you get all that? Don't worry. Sometimes it takes a few tries to get that regression process down. Well, we've completed four lessons so far, and we have four more to go. And we'll, we'll just be covering a variety of different things. So uh, thanks so much for watching, and see you next time.